Sam Telfer is the member for Flinders and uh, Shadow Minister for a whole range of portfolios, and we might start with police. Welcome back, Sam. Thank you very much. Uh, Sam, look, you've had a bit to say about the adequacy of police resources in the region. What's the trigger for those concerns in recent times? Yeah, we, we've been faced with a, a challenging and worrying trend, really, and it's in, on the Air Peninsula, especially within our, our major centres of Port Lincoln and Sejuna, seeing the offences numbers starting to rise uh, in a real worrying way. So I've been I've been looking at the some of the stats coming out of Port Lincoln and and the the assault, uh, the theft, the damage to property numbers are are really concerning, and that's reflected as well in Sejuna and the stories that I'm hearing from locals on the ground really are about community members starting to be worried about their own personal safety and the safety of their businesses and their and their households. So uh, it really does reflect um, the concerns that I have around the levels of resourcing that we do have in our police force on the Air Peninsula in particular. You know, I've had talks with community, uh, as I said, business owners, parents, but even police officers themselves who are who are just fed up with the anti-social behaviour which is happening at the moment in, in Port Lincoln and, and Sejuna. And, and really, uh, the, the local police officers that we've got are doing the best they can with the resources they have, but they obviously need more support to keep up with the demand across our region. Well, is it incumbent perhaps on the federal government to throw some money in to support uh, anti-social behaviour uh, measures, I guess, when you consider uh, Rowan Ramsey, your federal colleague, has really joined the dots here claiming that the anti-social behaviour has only really begun since the cashless debit card trial ceased? Yeah, and the whole of community solution that's needed really uh, does reflect the complex nature of, of what we're dealing with. It's not just about making sure that we're you know, catching those people who are offending and, and holding them to account, but it's it's keeping our whole community safe and doing that in a way which incorporates some of the other steps that can be put in place with education and intervention programs. And, and especially for our young people, it's the bit that uh, really concerns me is, is those young people who have found themselves on a on a slippery slope towards criminal activity that uh, if there's an intervention early on, well, there might be an opportunity to be able to break that cycle. But at the moment, these programs aren't uh, in place in our centres like Port Lincoln and Sejuna, uh, and it really is incumbent on there to be a, a multi-pronged approach. Uh, when it comes to, I guess, uh, the issue of safety, while we're talking in the police portfolio, uh, I know I've spoken with your um, shadow road safety minister, Vincent Tarsia, but uh, in the Air Western policing area, uh, we have thankfully so far um, seen a reduction in road fatalities, uh, but there's no time for complacency, certainly in other parts of the state. We've seen a terrible rise in r- rural road deaths. Yeah, and as shadow police, I work closely with the, the shadow road safety minister to try and make sure we're considering what you know, policy and, and uh, strategy we should be suggesting to the government because uh, having a level like we do is just not acceptable. Every life that's lost on our roads is a, a tragedy and especially within regional communities where everyone, every member of that community feels these these incidents, whether it's a fatality or a, a serious injury. And you know, especially around Easter time, we need to make sure that we're keeping as safe as possible in our roads. Don't be distracted. Make sure we're concentrating especially in the long distances that we have to travel for those of us who live further away from Adelaide. Now, in the time since we last spoke, and I know water is the portfolio of Nicola Senefani, but it is a very important issue for the Air Peninsula, especially down at Port Lincoln. But the big announcement since our last chat was uh, made by the state government that it was going to try and advance this northern water study, uh, get a desalination scenario for principally for mining, but water security uh, in the upper Spencer Gulf and the far north. Uh, Minister Close told us that maybe this plant down at Billy Lights Point might be small and modular because they're hoping maybe the northern water solution could send water down. Uh, do you think that's a realistic prospect or is any desalination at Billy Lights Point uh, not satisfactory? Well, I've been frustrated with this whole process because you know the, the former Minister David Spears set up a set up a site selection committee with representatives from community and, and industry, aquaculture, to actually put a recommendation to SA Water about the local perspective on a preferred location. That body of work was done and they took all these details into account before uh, putting their recommendation to SA Water, who have now decided to reject that 
recommendation and, and go back to their plan of Billy Lights Point. Now, for those who don't know the lay of the land in Port Lincoln, Billy Lights Point basically is at the culmination of Proper Bay and Boston Bay. It's a really protected bay area and it has existing aquaculture, you know, mussel farming, kingfish, tuna, all within that in close vicinity. And, and this is why the community and, and operators are really concerned about what a potential desal plant can be. Putting in the discussion around northern water really does murky the water, no pun intended, because that project's a long-term project, which is more about nation-building opportunities for our state and for our country. The desal that's proposed for the Air Peninsula really is about the, the core function of it is the long-term water supply for the residents and the community of Air Peninsula. I've called upon the state government and Minister Close and Minister Scriven in particular to to bring SARDI as the uh, scientific uh, experts in this space to Port Lincoln to actually meet with community uh, so they can present their science, their modelling, which has provided the basis for the decision from Susan Close and the Labor government because at the moment there's too much concern and too much uncertainty about what the environmental and industry impacts would be uh, if a desal plant was to go at Billy Lights Point. Well, it does seem to me all along the real question, even SA Water's concern, seems to have been about the cost of putting it down towards the south and uh, directing waters into the southern ocean. Uh, I get the impression that uh, after Nick, uh, Susan Close was saying, oh, we might want some federal funding for this, they may be keeping their powder dry to get federal funding for a multi-billion dollar plant at Wyala instead. Well, the problem is that the water supply of the Air Peninsula is forecast to to get to a point of unsustainability in 2025. You know, it's only a, only a couple of short years away, so this work needs to start to happen soon. And unfortunately, the putting the business case for the Northern Water Scheme uh, into the discussion around the long-term water supply of the Air Peninsula really does mean that there's another layer of uncertainty. What we need is some certainty within our community, and that's why I say that uh, Susan Close, the government, uh, Sardi and SA Water really need to, to provide themselves, uh, make themselves available to a community forum so everyone's got the opportunity to see the science that they've based their decision on. And if it's as robust and as deep as they are saying it is, well, there should be no issue with that, and they should be able to well explain to people on the ground why they believe a, a desal plant at Billy Lights Point wouldn't impact local environment and potentially the aquaculture industry. Now, we're speaking water security there, and uh, I guess sometimes we worry about drought in the future. Uh, there's often been said there's a childcare desert in parts of regional uh, Australia as well. Uh, you've got a childcare desert there? Yeah, the, especially in our small communities, uh, really does mean that if there's no childcare or inadequate childcare available, uh, the handbrake that that puts on our local economy and, and locals in general is significant. Uh, it was actually good this week to be able to host the, the Shadow Minister for Early Childhood, Angie Bell, to our region, along with Rowan Ramsey, who's the hard-working MP for a, a very big electorate that has a lot of areas that has a, has a dearth of childcare. Uh, and Angie Bell and Rowan, along with me, went around and made sure we heard with local communities who are actually trying to deal with this situation and, and do it in a positive way and, and work out what solutions can be put in place from a federal level who are ultimately responsible for childcare, but also from a state level. With my Shadow Minister for Regional Population hat on, I'm really keen to make sure that the regional parts of our state are not left behind when it comes to opportunities such as housing, such as childcare, where if we get the arrangements right, we can really maximise the economic opportunity that we have in our regions at the moment. But if we get it wrong, unfortunately, we're going to be left behind again. Yeah, we certainly don't want that to happen. Sam Telfer is the member for Flinders, and uh, great to catch up with you again, Sam, here on Flow FM. Always a pleasure.